Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Ahsoka Episode 1, Part 1, Master and Apprentice. Written and directed by Dave Filoni. In this episode, a valuable prisoner escapes from the New Republic, uh, as well as a search for answers reunites two old friends. Uh, so this episode, uh, yeah, this, this episode stars Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka Tano, Natasha Lou Bordiso as Sabine Wren, Ivana Shakno as Sheen Hati, Ray Stevenson as Valen Skoll, David Tennant as Huyang, uh, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Hera Syndulla. I won't go into any more details or any more characters, uh, just to kind of avoid spoilers. If I do get into spoilers, which I probably won't, uh, you know, I'll give you plenty of warning. Uh, but this was a, a fantastic episode, a uh, way to kick off uh, episode one. It was almost, it was all like about 50 minutes long. Which means it gives us it gives us plenty of room uh, to develop the story. Welcome everybody into this world. This episode is definitely trying to give you a lot of context uh, for anybody that hasn't seen uh, the Clone Wars or Rebels and all that stuff. So I think you can jump into the show without all that context. You will definitely miss a few things. Uh, I think the emotional weight of the or the characters. The connection with those characters may not be as strong initially, uh, but I think you can develop that. So, uh, you know, this has very much a a classic Star Wars feel. We start with we start with a text scroll. Uh, the music, it all is very reminiscent of some of the themes of like hope and whimsy and exploration. Uh, definitely like uh, the themes and, and and motifs of maps and and finding. Uh, things in the galaxy is very strong all throughout. Uh, I think those relationships uh, and how they're held together is going to be a really important part of this. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have the introduction of a few new characters uh, that are played by Ray Stevenson and Ivana Sanko, who, as you've seen in the trailer, uh, they are force wielders. They have red lightsabers. That's all really we know about those characters. Uh, and they are out to uh to retrieve a prisoner that that the new republic has in custody uh it's all very quickly like we in the first few scenes we get right into it uh there's really not a lot of holding back uh so that definitely helps the pace of the episode because later on as we do need a little bit of exposition uh things are going to slow down right as we take a few minutes to have characters catch up with each other uh characters to have to be introduced to a new audience, uh, give people a little context, just all that stuff needs to happen organically, which I believe for the most part it does. Um, I want to say also big kudos to anybody that's acting under all that makeup, like Rosario Dawson and Mary Elizabeth Winstead. They both have a lot of prosthetics and makeup on for their characters. Um, and I think it looks, I feel, as good as they can definitely get it. I know I've seen some complaints online about like the tendrils or, or the the accuracy of the look, but obviously translating something like this into live action, you can make the choice to go for a more practical look uh, that I think will feel more realistic. Uh, even even uh, uh, Huyang, who's the droid that used to teach kids how to you know put lightsabers together and stuff like that, like even. He looks practical. I believe for the most part he is. I'm sure he's got a, maybe some lights or, or you know, some details that are finished on CG, but that's great. Uh, I didn't know David Tennant was going to be voicing uh, that character, which makes sense. Uh, so that was, a, that was really fun. Uh, so, yeah, we get a lot of the classic transitions that like those editing wipes that uh, are from the old movies. We get a little bit of action. We get a little bit of grandiose. Uh, exploration of some of the settings that we're in. Uh, the music is great. I will say I made a note that when one of the characters comes in, I don't think we've ever had rock music in Star Wars until this series. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, but man, man, oh man, like when that happened, I was like, this is a little bit different. Like this is like a little bit of a remix of the Star Wars of old with some new additions of like new things happening, which I really enjoyed. So um, I think overall it's a, it's a good episode. Uh, there was nothing in there that kind of blew my mind. It was just really 
to me, it was more comforting to just kind of go back and revisit these characters uh, more than anything. That's really what I wanted to see and and what I was expecting from the show. Uh, I think all the mind blowing will come later on. Uh, but I think this was just a really nice episode to kind of ease back into this world. Um, I feel like we're in good hands with Dave Filoni. So, all right, I'm going to get into spoilers now. Uh, so if you haven't watched the episode, go watch it and come back, finish this. So we we get um, a character to come back. Uh, we have Lady Morgan L. Esbeth, played by Leanne, uh, Diana Lee Inosanto. Uh, who we saw in, a, in another series, I believe it was the Mandalorian, um, or maybe Book of Boba Fett. I don't know. One of, it was one of the two, where we introduced this character. She is the prisoner. Uh, she is who uh, Shin Hati and Balin Cole actually very easily retrieve from the Republic. Like they are powerful force users, which I really like. Uh, from there, we get to see Ahsoka visit a temple in, in the planet of Ar- or the system of Arcana, who who is known to be, and the, the show tells you this, even if you don't know the lore, it's a former stronghold of the Witches of Dathomir. Now, if you haven't seen Rebels or the Clone War, that may not mean as much, but but uh, I really like that sequence. It was giving, like, the Fifth Element kind of vibes when she was down there. Uh, we get a really cool fight with Ahsoka versus five different, like, battle droids for this map. Uh, then we get a really cool reunion of Hera, uh, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and uh, and uh, as Sokotano, which is this is when I was like, oh my god, look at those! Like they're just both uh, doing all this with all the prosthetics online. I was like, ah, oh, that that can't be. That's got to be tough, right? So uh, there's still the mystery of like who Balin and Shin are. Like who are these Force wielders? We get a few clues all throughout the episode. We do know that. Balin was a former Jedi for sure, and now I guess the assumption is that Shin is an apprentice, especially based on the title of the episode. Um, and it, this is all leading to this map that uh, the the old empire or this new empire people like they're trying to find Thrawn, which leads our protagonist to believe that Ezra could also be alive. So that's kind of the motivation there. Uh, which I want to see that. That was a really nice scene with Sabine r- listening to the recording that Ezra left behind. Uh, also, Clancy Brown is in this thing. Uh, there's a big ceremony, uh, like uh, the celebration of like when the Battle of Lothal was won. Uh, he's like a governor of this place now. Uh, so that was really cool. It was really nice to see Clancy Brown. Uh, and then we get the scene where I was telling talking about the rock music is with Sabine. Like she's just... Uh, rolling down a highway in a speeder, uh, and that was just very different. It, it it almost felt like the opening scene of the one of the new Star Wars, the Star Trek movies, where uh, where uh, Captain Kirk as a as a I think he was a kid or a teenager. He's running down the highway and he's being chased, and he's he's uh, like he stole a car or something. Like I got a lot of vibes from that. Like they were trying to. Let you know this is the rebellious character. So who knows what all Sabine's been through? Uh, you know, like why did she stop being an apprentice? Uh, we get to see her fight with a lightsaber later on, but before that, there's a lot of tension in every scene with Ahsoka and Sabine, which I think is great. Uh, it, it gives you a lot of uh, a lot of the tone of what's going to be set up for later episodes. Uh, so yeah, it's really fun to see Sabine kicking ass. She takes over a few droids. Then we get the the big battle for this episode, I think, is Shin versus Savine. Uh, I think Ivana Sakno has been playing this character, just very stoic, very serious, uh, very much of a, a Dark Force user. Uh, so I'll be really interested in seeing how this plays out. Uh, Sabine gets stabbed with a lightsaber, which obviously that's kind of a good place to end the episode. We know that she's in the later episodes, even just by looking at the, the card um uh, in the next episode, but but still, like that's got to be tough, like tough to recover. They've lost the map, they've lost their weight that they were gonna find Ezra. Hopefully, Sabine made some kind of backup, or or, or you know, there's there's still a way to for them to kind of chase after these two force users. Um, so, and one last beautiful beautiful touch before the closing credits, uh, we have a card that says that reads, uh, "For our friend Ray." For those that may not know, Ray Stevenson passed away very recently. Um, very unfortunate news, and and just you know, he was just a fantastic actor and performer, and and 
you know, like this was going to be something like a big project, a new, new big project for him. Um, so it was definitely very sad. So it was a, a beautiful tribute uh, from at the end of this episode. Uh, the closing credits are also really amazing. They just have this map. And I really, I really like this theme of the map uh, kind of like encompassing this whole thing, because I believe this is Filoni's way of saying this show is kind of our guide to what we're going to expect from Star Wars in the upcoming few years, maybe. Uh, maybe that's just me putting a lot of that on it. So I haven't watched the second episode. I, I stopped to record this and put it out. Uh, so review for episode two will be out later, probably uh, on Wednesday. This, this dropped early on Tuesday evening, so on the 22nd. So sometime on the 23rd, there should be a review out for episode two. Uh, but if you got this far, let me know what you thought about this episode down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. And may the force be with you. Bye-bye.